Guys, welcome and hello, hello and welcome, good evening and welcome and hello and buenas noches! E welcome, e hello, e hello and welcome. Guys, thank you for tuning in to Un Poco Mas, the show where we try to bring you just a little bit more information about, uh, in this case, of course, the SoFi stock, SoFi Technologies Incorporated, ticker symbol, S-O-F-I. Hey now! Um, and a lot of people out there like to say, hey, I'm a brain-dead, thoughtless, so-fi, bull, pumper, cultist, and to that I plead chunky as charged, folks. Yes, um, I don't think I'm a cultist. I think I very, very carefully consider the bear case. In fact, pardon me, I like to think that um, <clears throat> I construct a far more effective and logical bear case um, then folks like the Chia Pet, the Five Head, Ms. West Values, the Parrot, the Bowling Ball, the Chode, um, all those guys. And basically, one of the things I noticed is that the guy Tanner interviewed who wrote the Strong Cell piece in uh, Seeking Alpha, Gary Gordon, um, he was head and shoulders more intelligent than a lot of these, you know, greenhorn rookie analysts. They trot out to uh, trash the SoFi stock. But, um, guys, let me um, share my turdly screen here. Guys, it's the SoFi stock. Apologies to uh, J Money, um, not a lurker. I give him late notice, odd hours, and, um, geez, the man has a life, a family to take care of, a job. Can't ask him to drop whatever he's doing, drop the dumbbells, you know, drop the children, drop the work. Um, just quit your job all to uh, moderate the chat on some morons YouTube. So um, apologies to not a lurker. These, um, you know, my hours that I do my live streams have more volatility than the goddamn SoFi stock. But guys, um, very, very, very good day for a number of reasons. First off, big pop in the morning, no sell-off. Um. You know, they're trying to push it downward to the right. It's not really working. Um, volume is extremely bullish. And more importantly, there are buys coming in, guys. Buys coming in. And this is critical. We have this huge increase in the short interest. What I talked about last night, worlds colliding like Costanza, the tectonic plates Coming together, there's going to be upheaval, there's going to be carnage only the Mayans could have predicted thousands, hundreds, or thousands of years ago. But no, seriously, guys, 17% um, uh, short interest um, is a lot. But what I was talking about with the guy Gary Gordon, he makes the, the short-term FUD macro case that people like the Chia Pet or the Five Head throw together um, is, just, is just, you know... Flood case bear analysis for dummies. I mean, they wrote the book bear, bear Cases for Dummies because it's like, well, you know, if interest rates are high, that's bad for SoFi. Well, if interest rates go lower, that's bad for SoFi. Oh, wait, interest rates aren't going to go lower right now. Wait, do overseas, whoopsies, take backsies. You know, whatever's happening is bad for SoFi. And they just, you know, twist the language into this sort of word salad so stupid people will believe it for a day or two. They sell off. Um... Guys, let me just, before I start blabbering too much, um, as I always do, let me just draw your attention to the chart. This We have a bullish setup here for the ages, guys. The last three times it's tested this upper bound um, back end of July on the pump and dump, and then um, the pre-New Year's little Santa rally there that led to the massive uh, parrot bowling ball head uh, pump and dump of uh, January 3rd, and then you have... Um, you know, this last one here, uh, an earnings testing the line for the third time being rejected. Uh, but what do you see each time it makes a run at this line? You see this huge gap up. You basically see two of them are pure pump and dumps um, last July and then this last one. And then this other one, yes, you do get a little bit of consolidation. You did have a little more of like a Christmas rally. Um, but this was all a setup for the parrot to come in and pull the rug out and then, you know, sell off massive reshart. But the critical thing here, guys, if you look all the way back since this thing broke up into this channel way last June, the stock, pump and dump aside, has been making lower lows. Just lower lows. This channel moving down, not the case anymore, guys. After this thing, we have higher lows. And I would submit we're going to break up through this channel. I think it's going to happen eminently. Um, I've been wrong before. I've been wrong many, many times. And um, 
look at the look at the last pump and dump guys why is this why is this last pump and dump so different okay it starts here at 759 and it basically bottoms out at the same point the last pump and dumps they've been pushing the stock down 20% 30% sometimes as much as 40% this accomplished nothing. Yes, they killed some options, but a lot of you guys are writing options. A lot of you guys are selling options. A lot of you guys are smart. <laughs> a lot of you guys listen to Felix. You just do, you know, massive amounts of pure Colombian wham wham, talk real fast, and, you know, you make a ton of money doing straddles and strangles and other um, brilliant options strategies. Guys, I know I'm all over the place, but what else is new? You guys might know a point guard by the name of CP3. Well, we've got a little uh, chief financial officer named CLP3. I've I've given him the moniker. You know I'm big on nicknames, guys. It's me. It's Danny Deals. It's Un Poco Moss. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys. Who's here with me? Um, okay, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go through your comments here, but I want to make I want to make a couple of points. Okay. You think, okay, you hear all this news about the shorting. Shorting has gone up in the last seven days. The short interest has gone up 21%. Okay, utilization's gone up 4%. Um, short interest, again, 20%. Uh, short interest of free flow, 21%. And then even today, guys, um, sorry, it's very warm in here. Um, even today, guys, you're talking about a bar. They sold off after hours, but during, during this attack, um, when the stock was trying to move up, they borrowed a million shares. Now it's saying they sold off after hours and it went back neutral. That, that may or may not be true, but Ortex has been to, um, basically keep up with these shorts. You saw the divergence between the exchange reported, uh, short interest and the Ortex estimated caught back up. Um, so this is very, very significant, and you have to look at it in light of this, which is the right kind of smart money increasing their SoFi positions every single day. Guys, these are the buys on Fintel. Why are a couple of these critical? We saw, I saw a couple weeks ago, I think pre-ER, Florida buying, Texas buying. Guys, look at the 13F for 212. You see the treasurer of the state of North Carolina. Okay, they're up to 426,000 SoFi shares. Okay, they've they've increased their position. Now you go down here a little bit, all these other buys, tons and tons of smart money coming in. Um, you look at Weiss, 1.5 million shares on a call. Um, but then you get down here, State of Wisconsin Investment Board. Okay, coming in for about 250,000 shares. Okay, increased their position uh, 28%. Treasurer of North Carolina um, increased their position, 33.33%. Uh, Guys, this is the smart money's smart money. These are the state pension funds. These guys take shares off the table and they hold them forever in many cases. They're not like hedge funds where they're extremely active traders trying to make every penny. And, 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 it's worth pointing out, they are extremely 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 conservative so it's just fair to say guys smart money is piling into the stock i know when these filings are updated um at the end of the quarter you're gonna see a fairly significant increase i'm just looking at the buys right now um but if you look at the overall the there's a few sellers um there's a few sellers coming in but it's the vast majority's buys. And you can see that here on this chart. The institutional ownership is increasing. Um, the institutional put call ratio, you see the, the puts coming down and the calls going up. Um, you see Vanguard still latest 68 million shares. And then you can see, you know, there are a few sellers in the market, but overall, if you look at this just just yesterday, guys, there's I don't know, just what the filing's showing up. And some of these don't show up toward toward the end of the quarter, but there's like you know, almost probably 15 institutions increasing their sh their share of SoFi. And Cowan, this is all one company. So there's two um, there are two decreases and one of those is a put. So guys, the writing's on the wall, you know. The, we've been saying this for months and quarters and almost ever since I started this stupid show. It will not stop with the volatility, with the games, with the killing options, with the shorting, um, with just scalping, with stop loss raids, with just all this nonsense to take money from retail investors and put it in the pocket of smart money. 
when smart money comes in, big fish, big fish eat little fish, big bank eat little bank, um, this is the end of the game. And we're seeing it play out right before our eyes. And the great part is, if you're long, is that they shorted the hell out of the stock right before earnings. And they were wrong. And why is it important that CLP3 is going to come out and talk on speak on it? Let me speak on it a bit. Let me holler at you. I just want to hear Chris LaPointe come out and just go, can I holler at you? Can I holler at you? Like he's on the Chappelle show. Can I holler at you? Let me holler. Let me holler. holler, holler. Let me holler at you. And it's like CLP3 is going to come out and he is going to absolutely slam the door on the shorts. Why does management come out and talk, you know, two thirds of the way through the quarter? Guys, this is this is the guidance. This is the reiteration. That's what these conferences are all about. It basically allows management to come out and make forward-looking statements and talk to people in this controlled setting with these softball questions. Thank you for joining us, CLP3. We notice your hair is, is not quite as exquisite as Anthony Noto, but we're still happy to have you. And why are you wearing a, uh, a tie instead of a windbreaker? What the hell is going on? What's wrong with the culture at SoFi? Where's your windbreaker? What's your windbreaker, Crystal Point? Um, in any case, I don't know if they're going to grill him like that, but, um, the other thing they're talking about guys, um, so the point's going to talk two thirds of the way through the quarter, and this can be absolutely devastating for shorts because one of the arguments Gary Gordon made and a lot of people have made is, Hey, any company can make a profit, you know, for one quarter, you can do it with accounting gimmicks. It's much harder to do two quarters in a row. Because a lot of the bad stuff you put off, a lot of the bad stuff they put in a Q3, it would come back and haunt you again the following quarter after you front-loaded everything good for Q4. But if he comes out on, you know, February 26th at the, I think it's the UBS conference, if he comes out at the, you know, I don't know if the Chode, the Chode master is going to be the one uh, cross-examining him, Timothy Chode, um, Chodo, but uh, he just raised his target from seven to eight, so... Maybe he knew LaPointe was going to be coming in. He didn't want LaPointe to kick him in the nuts with his big steel toe boot. Um, but anyway, guys, um, I think intellectually, Timothy Chodo is not fit to carry Chris LaPointe's golf clubs, um, not fit to wash his car, not fit. All he could really do is just run on home and grab his fucking shine box. Why don't you run on home, Spider? Why don't you dance on home? Dance it back over here. Well, don't go crying about it. Um... Anyway, guys, I didn't really know where I was going with the, this whole live stream, but um, one of the things we see is that the bears are giving up, and the baggy shorts that shorted this thing recently from 680 to 740 just kept digging deeper, shorted up at the highs um, on this last little run. They're trapped, and their big brothers are beating the hell out of them. They're not the good big brother that defends you from the bully. They're the brother that comes and gives you the wedgie and just starts beating on you as well. And you see this with the volume on the options. There is absolutely nothing going on here at these lower ranges where you'd expect some type of big push down. Zero. Zero volume really below seven. I mean, almost nothing. So there's no appetite to push it down and cover in the sixes. Not anytime soon. And if you think LaPointe is coming out at this conference to just whistle Dixie, just, you know... Put on a name tag. Hi, my name is Chris. It's nice to meet you other CFOs. No. No. The guy is a cold-blooded killer in khaki pants. He is a, you know, he's a sleeper. He's an assassin. The guy's bright. The guy's money. He's money and he doesn't even know it. He's like Mikey. Um, you know, in swingers. So the point comes out on the 26th. He says, not only is our guidance good, but if he hints it's up, if he hints at tech, if he hints, you know, Q1, guys, if Q1 is three cents, the, the game is over. I mean, they're saying six cents for the year. We had two cents last quarter. Even if it's two cents, that's very, very good. I mean, but I don't think it's going to be less than two cents. I think this fall off in Q1, this doom and gloom is complete bullshit. I mean, look at the stock goats video. Look at other videos that are going over that website traffic on Simple Web. This is their most traffic they've ever seen, guys. That that is not necessarily completely predictive, but it's certainly a correlation. Give me a correlation, you know. Um, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome and hello, hello and welcome. Like to say hello. Colombian Kingpin 347 was first. Oprah's Wet Cave, you were not first. You were second, turd. Remember, Oprah's Wet Cave, second place is the first loser. Um, Glegland? Where the hell's Clegland? Um, Sebastian Cairo. Uh, good evening. Welcome. Hello. 
Good evening, Sebastian. Fonz G. Colombian, you're back. I'm really just JR. What's going on, JR? I don't know. Not a lurker. Um, I hope you're well. Hope you're having a good night. He's probably doing something with the family, um, as it should be. Don't waste too much time on me. You are still a VIP, and we still appreciate you, and your wrench is still felt. If you guys step out of line, not a lurker can hit you over the head on the next stream. That's how far his reach is. He can reach through space and time and hit you with that wrench. That's the power not a lurker wields in Unpoco Moss land. Don't step out of line. He might not slap you as hard as CLP3 is going to slap you. He's not going to slap you as hard as CLP3 is going to uh, slap the chode. The chodo. The chode master. This is a tepid race. It's not warm. It's just tepid. As Gilbert Godfrey would say. Um, it's just tepid. It's just more tepid. Um, you know, it's a tepid upgrade. It's a dollar. We'll take it. Nobody else. You guys notice that after that fucking earnings report? Can you believe that? After that ER, first net profit, we're expecting all these re-rates. Not one real upgrade in all of these sea-sucking snakes, um, all of these phony, FUD-spreading, short-tool, douchebag, shinebox all-stars, these shoe shine boys, these, these truck stop all-stars. Um, these guys need to run on home and get their shinebox. We're only getting reiterations and downgrades. Reiterations and downgrades. After the first, you you think there'd be a couple of upgrades, but let's face it, there's only four four buys on the stock, and a lot of the bears are just complete tools. They're not doing any analysis. They're not doing any math. They're not doing any forecasting. It's like Gary Gordon is like, well, I didn't forecast any numbers, and I only did about a quarter of the work I'd normally do for an article, but you know, I didn't do anything about the text. I just didn't want to bother to try to understand it. So here it is. I'm like. The guy's so fucking smart and he has so much experience. It's just a shame, you know. It's just a, sh a shame that's how he decided to, um, you know, play so far. It's like, you know, because we're not going out like that. I'm glad Tanner did that interview. I think Tanner did a really good job of uh, pushing back while, you know, having a, a good conversation. So, guys, um, that's that. We got the shorts. Um, we have really bullish volume. We have CLP3. Talking on the 26th, I think basically if he comes out and he says, like, look, guidance is good, wink, wink. He's basically saying, you know, it's going to be at least as good as last quarter. Um, again, look at the website traffic for January, guys. It's through the fucking roof. That has been predictive of good member ads. That has been predictive of good top line. I mean, guys, if we do another quarter with, you know... The type of growth we saw last quarter, which, you know, we may not, but if the EBITDA growth continues, we continue to get close. Remember, we hit the EBITDA margin. If we continue to get improve the net margins and can, continue to improve the incremental margins, um, that's basically what's important. Guys, many of you probably watched the uh, Super Bowl yesterday, I'm sure. One of the things I'm kind of reminded of is why people like Gary Gordon, some of these older guys, some of these analysts just don't see it. They've been covering the banking sector too long. They don't see that people want an alternative. Um, you could shoot a hole in the case um, quite easily. You know, he's like, well, the only reason SoFi is growing deposits is they're paying the most. But, but that's not true, guys. There's other digital banks um, that include have huge name recognition advantages over... Um, SoFi, including American Express paying very high rates, Discover paying very high rates, Ally was actually paying a higher rate than SoFi. I think Lending Club, Robinhood was paying an extremely high rate. None of them are growing deposits at the rate of SoFi. So when he says the only thing that you can do to bring in customers is lower standards or pay more, SoFi is paying a lot, but they're not paying more. So his argument just doesn't hold water. Why are they adding deposits so fast? It's because people like the products. People like the platform. People like the wheel. People like the convenience. People like the time savings. And their customers are young, affluent, with very high credit, high incomes, great jobs. They're not lowering standards. So the guy's wrong. I mean, at the halftime show, you saw, saw Usher. For SoFi's customers are young with money. They don't barely know who Usher is, guys. I mean, people my age, these, these guys are kids. I see them, them working at SpaceX, working at Tesla, engineers, in the aerospace field, some of the, the young up-and-coming attorneys, the young up-and-coming physicians. You know, these guys are going to dominate the world. These guys are in their 20s and 30s right now. These guys are the SoFi customer, the super premium customer. 
a super premium customer. And guys, if this wasn't enough excitement, if I didn't blow your depends right off of your colon, um, guys, tomorrow, and Tanner just did a good video about this, haven't had time to uh, catch it all, been busy doing some work. Um, but as the next generation of banking so far is always here for the assist, guess what's inside? And you might be surprised what's waiting for you. It opens on February 13th. People are speculating it's something sports related. Um, it could be another offering, a la life insurance. The travel could be that next module. And again, I pointed out um, recently it got uh, up my life insurance through SoFi. They go through ladder. It was... Oh, last time I got life insurance, it was a complete pain in the ass. It was like the the health and the health uh, questionnaires, the thing. It went on forever. It took days. I had to come out. They did all, you know, they everything but the old rubber glove test. The you know, it's pretty intrusive. With with so far the term life, it was so easy. the The rates were great. It was literally done in ten minutes. And you have life insurance. So the travel's just as easy. You're saving more. It's going through Expedia. Half of you guys probably use Expedia anyway. Why not go through SoFi and save even more? And also, it just gives another product. It gives more revenue to SoFi. So things you're already doing anyway, if they work better and are cheaper, why not do them on SoFi? You know, why not join Relay? Hey, why not join Relay? I mean, come on. Have you guys heard about airline peanuts? They're such small bags. Um, anyway, guys, let's not get into a sign impression that could just never end. I think that's pretty much all I had to say. Anybody have any speculation on what SoFi is going to announce tomorrow? Um, tell me down in the comments, um, which are over here on my left. Um, I can handle it today, guys. What do you think about the price action? He gave a half ass bear argument, but at least it was a bear argument ether between us. These other bears, they're the short-term macro bullshit that just has nothing to do with SoFi. At least he's saying, hey, they're in a bad industry. But it just nothing makes sense. Like, not only did that argument not make sense, when he's basically saying, the other thing he was talking about is the company's young. It doesn't have enough track record. And that's reason enough to put a strong sell on it. Just be, okay, they've had a really good track record, but through 10 quarters, they can't help when they went public. The macro con I don't think the macro conditions have been nearly as rosy as he's saying. What other companies got their entire fucking business canceled by the government? He's like, well, they reinvented. Management does this all the time. They just reinvent. They pump for five years. Bullshit. Bullshit. This barely never happened to another company. This is unprecedented. It's unprecedented. And I'm outraged. If you couldn't tell, you weak, lame, basic bitches. No, how's it going, everybody? It's Un Poco Moss. I am sweating like a whore in church. Um, I don't know why it's so hot in here. Uh, Cutes likes it warm. She weighs um, very, very little, has no body fat. So we got to keep the temperature good for Cutes. I'm going to go with the phony tail, guys. I'm going to get the man bun situation situated. Read a few more of your comments and then get the hell out of here. Um, nothing really new going on on Seeking Alpha. Um, anything new going on on um, Orte? And basically, guys, look at this volume. Absolutely beautiful. 44, 37, 49, 40, 44. The algo is losing track. They're accumulating. The shorts are the bag holders. The shorts are trapped more and more every day. And all they do is borrow. What's the end game here? What happens when CLP3 comes out on the 26th and slams the door on your freaking stupid? What happens? What's your plan, shorts? What's your plan? You're just looking for the Fed to bail you out? You're looking for a war? You're looking for Nodo to publicly crap himself? It ain't gonna happen, guys. Nodo owns your soul. Nodo plans these ERs a fucking year in advance down to the penny. These ERs are more carefully crafted than his hair. You think you're gonna beat Nodo at this game? You're stupid. And the other thing is, he's talking about Gary Gordon that annoys. He's like, management only has a track record of, you know, three years. Why worship CEOs? Like, Noto's track record is not just here. Noto's track record is not just Twitter. Noto's track record is not just NFL. Noto's, Noto, when he was with Goldman, he was one of the most respected guys because he made the most money. He's a brilliant guy if nobody's noticed this. 
I mean, I was looking at one of these pieces of news, this BGG guy they stole away from SoFi, um, Barrett Scruggs. You know, when he was, a, he just came as an executive vice president at SoFi, I noticed he was an engineer. He was an army ranger. I mean, same as Noto, guys. Look at who SoFi hires. I'm sorry, you know, BB, BBG stole this guy away. But SoFi to participate in up, upcoming uh, investor conference, this is a lot more important. These investor conferences are critical. This is when it cuts through the FUD and you actually hear from management and they've already seen two thirds of the quarter. They already know what the quarter looks like when they're talking. Listen, listen, give them a whole Kogan. Okay, listen to LaPointe, CLP3. He's the man, he speaks the truth. So this is going on, uh, I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. I clicked on the Scruggs guy. Um, so it's going to be February 26, uh, 1 50 PM Eastern time. So, um, that's actually during the, uh, trading day, just barely at the end, I guess. Um, or no middle of the trading day. And then, so it's going to be, who is this one? It's the, uh, sofa UBS. So yeah, it is UBS February 26. Um, I don't know if it's going to be live fireside chat, but whether it's live or not, it doesn't really make any difference, but it's kind of nicer when they're there. It makes for a nicer video. They're by a golf course. They have some, you know, people walking around women with pastel sweaters tied around their waists, people with money, just people with money hanging out in Monterey, Pebble beach, whatever the fuck they're doing. Anyway, guys, um, don't know if anybody has any speculation what's going on over here. Um, home, the Harley roadside cheese, porn shops, um, ether between us, two dash face, heirloom cedar, Matt flows here. Hello, Matt flow. Good to see you. EBITDA is clutch. EBITDA growth has been absolutely insane. Official bank of the NBA. Oh man, that would be amazing. What about official bank of the NFL? I don't think they could really pull that one off. Cause there's a lot of other people kind of vying for that title, but I think if anybody could do it, um, yeah, I completely agree with you, Dale. He's a value guy, and he's talking. If you listen to the stocks, they're like, "Well, what are you buying?" He's talking. He's buying mortgage insurance companies. He's like, he's that guy, you know, deep value, very intelligent. Not hating on the guy. I'm not hating on the guy. It's just the strong sell doesn't make sense. He's basically the track record's too short. Again, it's like if you see a ten year old and you're like, "Hey, this ten year old's the best ten year old basketball player in the country." And you're like, yeah, but he still can't play in the NBA because he's only five foot eight. Like those guys are seven feet tall. He can, he's 10 years old. It's not his fault. He's 10 years old. You can't blame somebody for their age. Management's had 10 quarters to execute. They've executed for 10 quarters. That's the way it is. So I don't know what you guys want. Spud Webb. I mean, yeah, Spud Webb, that dunk contest, that was amazing. What about Muggsy Bogues? That guy could dunk a mini ball. He's five foot three. Um, yeah, I know guys. I know. I'm just, I'm just looking for something to talk about. I'm looking for something to rant about. I'm a huge Karen. I'm a huge Karen. If you idiots haven't figured that out, but anyway, guys, we're just talking about smart money. Like, okay. Smart money's coming in. Basically it takes shares off the market, kills the short CLP three speaking. I'm just going back to my description guys. It's in the description of the video. I just can't remember guns and butter guys. This is the debate. Um, he's talking about, you know, you can't do both. You're going, well, then how is SoFi making a profit? If it's a growth at all costs story, how are they already making a profit after only 10 quarters as a public company? They just started as a bank 10 quarters ago. He's like, well, they're very young. It's a short track record. It is, it is, but shouldn't they get the benefit of the doubt as long as they're performing, as long as they're executing? Shouldn't they have a chance to at least make a mistake, at least fail before you call them a failure and say they're going to go bankrupt? Isn't it possible they have a better cost structure that they built a better mousetrap? That's what I would submit with SoFi. SoFi has built a better mousetrap. Guys, we're looking to break out of this channel. This is as clearly a bullish thing as you're ever going to see in your life. It legs up, it bleeds down and sideways, continue to make lower lows, shoots up, Thumbs back down, retest, great ER, start making higher lows. We're going to break through this line, folks, and it's not going to be that long. We're going up. The shorts are screwed. The shorts were wrong about the ER. They've been wrong from day fucking one, and it's about time they pay the bill. This isn't a dine and dash situation, shorts. We're not going to let you push down to six and cover your positions at a nice fat profit while y'all laugh and high five. And do a bunch of blow in, you know, 
bridge and tunnel clubs or whatever it is from uh, boiler room. Ah, you're bridge and tunnel girl. Anyway, I don't really, really know what that is. I think it's a girl from Jersey who comes over and pretends she's from Manhattan or whatever. Dude ass face. You got it. Dale P. You got it. Montana, Montana trout fisher, Freddie Lafitte and his band with the beat. I am your favorite Karen. Thank you. And you're my favorite um, band leader from the Andy Griffith show. Um, dark master. Uh, thanks for joining me. Bookend tackles. Thanks a lot. Columbia. Thank you again for being my first comment. Oprah's wet cave. Thank you for being slightly later than him, but I'm um, thinking you were first. That's cute. Um, and I hope, uh, Stedman as well as well. Basketball, NBA, something that's everybody's saying. Everybody's saying, I don't know how they know that probably an NBA team partnership. NBA is what about an NBA stadium, uh, sponsorship? I know, um, for instance, the LA one, it went to, uh, it was obviously Staples Center for a long time. Then it was something else. I think it was Crypto.com. I don't know what it is now. Maybe it's still Crypto.com, but um, they might not be in the best of shape. So um, if they picked up the naming rights to the, the, you know, they would basically own Los Angeles. SoFi would be synonymous with Los Angeles sports. That'd be incredible. I, I have no idea where I'm getting that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Everybody's talking about it. Heirloom Cedar. I do not know what's going to happen. Bernie Henry. Hello. Uh, good to see you, Bernie. Uh, Brin, Brinny Henry. Brinny Henry. Um, great to see you too. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you. BH. Big BH in the house, in the hizzy. Brinny Henry up in the hizzy. Um, Flint Creek Soap Company. Night, night. Good to see you, Flint Creek. Who is a woman, an entrepreneur. Guys, I got to run. It has been a another horrible show. Thank you for joining me on mm, Poco Moss. Um, it is February 12th, 2024. God, get you lady something nice. A couple days to Valentine's Day. Hint, 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 hint. It's un Poco Moss, guys. It's a SoFi stock. The shorts are completely upside down, completely head over heels, ass over tea kettle, and um. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys. It's Oon Coco Boss. Peace. I'm out of here.